Now in this part, what we've got to do is integrate sine squared theta with respect to theta. And we're told that uh, we should use this identity here. In fact, we should know this. If Even if they didn't say this, we should know to use this identity anyway to integrate sine squared theta. Now, how do we use the identity? Well, we need to make sine squared theta the subject. So from this, if we were to add 2 sine squared theta to both sides and at the same time subtract cos 2 theta from both sides, we'll have 2 sine squared theta is identical to 1 minus cos 2 theta. And if we now divide by 2, you can see that we end up with sine squared theta is identical to, well you could write 1 minus cos 2 theta all over 2, but I prefer to write half bracket 1 minus cos 2 theta. You'll see why in a moment. Okay, so that's essentially then how we're going to use this identity. We're going to substitute this in for sine squared theta now. So this will be equal to the integral of this value here. But because we've got this constant to half, you can bring it outside the front of the integral. Alright? And uh, then we've got 1 minus cos 2 theta, and this is integrated with respect to theta. So in the usual way then, we've got a half, we can integrate these terms here. We should be uh, familiar with this, okay, so the integral of 1 with respect to theta is going to be theta, and the integral of minus cos 2 theta is going to be minus a half sine 2 theta. And then don't forget the constant of integration plus c. Now you could leave it like this, and that's quite acceptable. If you want to take it further, you could pull out this 2, okay, to the front, and you end up with a quarter. And because you've pulled out 2, then you've got to double this theta, so that becomes 2 theta. And then you've got minus sine 2 theta plus c. Okay, so that's an alternative. In my opinion, that is better than this solution, but uh, you know, this is quite acceptable to leave it like that. Okay, so there you go.